Good morning, everybody. How y'all doing? Um, today, I'm going to do a live video in the group. Uh, I've been coming on here the past, I don't know, a couple weeks here and there. Usually, uh, my sister-in-law and I, we do, our, our group is called Breaking the Chains, and we usually do live videos on Just for Today, and we'll do the topic of the date that it is, and that'll be our open discussion. And we'll go live and we'll talk about um, the topic and kind of go back and forth with it. Um, for anybody that doesn't know, my name is Joseph and I'm a part of Breaking the Chains. And what Breaking the Chains is, it's our recovery group. And what we do, uh, we're from the Eastern Shore of Maryland. And what we do with our recovery group is uh, we raise money, we hold events uh, twice a year. We They're like charity events. We have people come out. And, um, you know, the whole town kind of gets involved, the whole county. And we try to raise money for recovery programs and uh, also raise awareness for the problem that's going on in the communities. Um, and <clears throat> it's important because it lets everybody see everybody for who they really are. You know what I mean? It, it lets it gives everybody a chance to get together, you know, addicts and non addicts and it kind of lets you see that, you know, they're real people too. And that, you know, they, they're trying, you know, that they're not just, they're not just an addiction. They're not just a disease or a choice or mistakes. You know, they're real people. Um, they're real everyday people. And, you know, you kind of be surprised about it. I always say, <clears throat> you know, if the, you think it might not relate to you because you're not an addict or you're not an alcoholic, but I mean, I can almost guarantee there's not a single person living that hasn't had a family member who has struggled with this in some kind of way. So it really impacts everybody. That's why, you know, I think it's important that everybody gets involved. Um, you know, like I've said before, we lose a lot of good people to addiction. And if we can get them clean and sober and get them the help they need, um, that's that's one person being saved. And that's somebody who can contribute and, you know, you never know what their message might bring to somebody else. You never know what their story might do for someone else. And you never know what they could go on to be later on in life. Um, so it's important that we all stick together as a community and that we all get together and, you know, just try to try to raise awareness and try to give people good messages here and there when we can. And, Today's topic, I'm not doing the just for today. Um, it's it's my birthday today, and uh, I just turned 30. Yeah. So um, I decided to do the topic, my own topic, and it's love yourself first. And the reason why I wanted to do this topic is because there's many reasons why I picked this topic. And the, the, the main reason why I picked this topic is when you spend your life in addiction and you spend your life... Uh, abusing alcohol and using drugs and you really start to strip the love that you have for yourself and it starts to become a love for whatever it is that you're chasing you're, you're chasing your bottle or you're chasing your drug of choice and you lose yourself in the process so when you get clean and sober and you start your recovery journey you have to start to learn how to love yourself again and this doesn't just apply to addicts, you know. There's a lot of there's a lot of people out there who struggle with this this topic. There's a lot of people out there who they have a hole inside of them and they're trying to fill it with all these other things when the reason and and they always stay empty, you know, they can never keep it full. And the main reason why that is is because they haven't learned how to love themselves first. You know, they 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 try to fill fill it with superficial things, you know, whether it be drugs, whether it be alcohol, whether it be, um, you know, attention or, or sex, or you're looking for somebody else to validate you, or um, whether it's material things, whether you, you go out to buy a new outfit and it might make you feel better. Um, but when the rush of having a new outfit dies down, then you're back feeling the same. You know, it's the same thing with, you know, you... You get excited when you're chasing a new a new partner, and then when you get them, it's kind of like, okay, that wasn't what I wanted. You know what I mean? And then it's the same thing with drugs, you know, and that's why it's a it's a real topic for us because, you know, for me personally, 
I always talk about how when we started off, we started off to party. You know, we started off to have a good time. So already we're starting a trend of we're trying to use we're trying to use um, drugs and alcohol to create happiness in the beginning, and we don't even realize it. You know what I'm saying? We don't even realize it because we're young, we're immature, um, and we're kind of just spreading our social wings, to, you know, for lack of a better phrase. And we, we're making new friends, it's exciting, we're having a good time, everybody's accepting everybody because everybody's, you know, tuned in, they're feeling good, um, and you're having some of the best times of your life, but when you're an addict or an alcoholic and you develop uh, an unhealthy relationship with it, it becomes something else. And then, um, you know, you're, you're drinking because you had a bad day or you're using drugs because you had a bad day. Um, you're getting into a fight with your partner and, you know, you're, you're using drugs and alcohol to fill that, to, to make yourself feel better or you're running to it. And, you know, you might be depressed about something and instead of dealing with these problems, um, you know, you'll turn to drugs and alcohol instead. And when you get clean and sober, you have to, you have to start over, you know, you're starting from scratch. It's like you're being reborn. You know, it's like, it's like, you know, it's like your first day being alive, you know, again. And the, the main thing where people make the mistake is, you know, they'll get clean and sober, but they won't really work on themselves. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I always say this, you know, your drinking and your drug use is just a symptom of a deeper problem. And until you identify that problem, you're probably going to have a hard time staying on course. Um, and it took me a while to identify my problem. You know, could it be, um, could it be, you know, my dad being an alcoholic? Could that be it? Could it be my mom being a drug addict? Could that be it? Um, could it be some of the rough things I went through in my childhood? You know, could that be it? No, it wasn't any of those things. It was the fact that I didn't truly love myself. You know what I mean? I didn't truly value myself. And it's kind of ironic because in alcohol use and drug use, we're perceived as selfish, which we are. And you would think being a selfish person, being all about you, you, you love yourself. You're full of yourself. It's all about you, right? But that's not the case because the, you're wearing the drugs and the alcohol as a mask, and it's really all about the drugs and the alcohol. It's not really about you at all. Um, you're, you don't, you're, not, you're selfish, but you're not selfish because you're not doing it for you. All the, all the things that you're doing, you're doing it for the drugs or the alcohol. So it's people can look at it kind of wrong, you know? Um, your behavior may be selfish behavior, but really it's not selfish because selfish means you do for self. You understand? And when you do drugs and alcohol, when you drink and abuse alcohol and abuse drugs, it's perceived like you're selfish. You know, everything's about you, but it's really not. Everything's about the drug. Everything's about the alcohol. So you really don't love yourself. Hello, Robin. Um, so you don't really love yourself. You love the drugs, you love the alcohol, and everything you do is surrounds that. It's all predicated around your drug use and your alcohol. And, um, you know, it's like I talked about for me, for my, you know, some of my story, it was like I was always looking forward to the next day I was going to drink, and my behavior emulated that. You know, it was like I was in a good mood, and people on the outside looking in might look at me and say, he seems happy to me. Yeah, I was happy as fuck, but I wasn't. I was only happy because I knew the next day I was going to be getting drunk, or I knew at the end of the night I was going to be getting drunk, or I knew by the weekend I was going to be getting drunk. And um, anybody that, that doesn't know, I went through a lot of different phases with my alcohol use. Um, I was the, I tried to be the functional every day, uh, just a buzz guy. You know what I mean? And then I tried to be the weekend warrior. And then I just spiraled out of control. It was like I almost got to the point later on in life where I was trying to hold out as long as I could because I knew once I drank, I was going to spiral out of control and I was probably going to do shit I regretted. And I wanted to make that less and less. So I would try to hold out as long as I could. You know what I mean? And when you try to hold out, 
what ends up happening is you find yourself getting irritable. You find yourself uh, creating arguments with people and being all bitchy at your job. And, you know, you might even walk out of your fucking job because you're so pissed off because you want to drink or use drugs really bad. But, you know, you got to hold out because, you know, every time you do something bad happens and you're trying to keep that down to a minimum. It's almost like trying to keep the keep the beast caged for as long as you can, because, you know, when you let it out, it's going to be a bunch of a bunch of chaos, um, and that's finally where I got to, and then I thought some, I thought, you know, if I, if I stay sober for a long time, it's like I'll push the reset button, and then I can start all over again to where I'm a social drinker, and I can just manage it, you can't, it's impossible, I've tried it, I tried it for 15 fucking years, you know, just trying to get it back under control, and that, that's the thing too, your ego gets in the way, um, reminiscing is a big downfall, you know, we all remember the good nights, but we rarely uh, remember how bad those bad nights really were. You know, we kind of look back on them and laugh. I've done it before. You know, I look back on it and thought it was funny. It wasn't fucking funny at the time. You know what I mean? It's only funny now because it's over. I, I made it out on the other side of it, so it's really not that big of a deal. But you'll find every time you go back out there, it's always the same story. Um, It's always the same result. It might take a little bit longer. You might... I, told, I tell people all the time, you know, you might have a good night that first night. You just might. But you're you're playing a game that you're never going to win. It's, all, it's always, um, you're always just waiting for your next fuck up, you know, because it's eventually going to come. You know, you see people that, you know, they drink or they, they use drugs and it might go smooth, but it only takes one false move when you're like that because you're not thinking clear. You're not, you're not. You're not yourself. Because I know people, um, we all know them, we know ourselves. You know, when they're clean and sober, they could be some of the best people ever. You know, they could be people you really love and care about and appreciate to have around. But then when they're on that type of time where they're chasing or they're, they're using, it's like, I don't fucking like that person. I don't even want to be next to that. I don't want to be nowhere around that person. You avoid them. Um... For me, being an alcoholic, it was different for me because, like, I saw myself as doing nothing wrong because it was socially acceptable. Um, when you're an alcoholic, especially when you're young, everybody just looks at you like, man, he's wild. You know, he's just wild. Nobody really beats you up about it. Um, so you and your friends, you know, you might look at drug addicts like something else. You know, like they're different. You separate yourself from them. But when you get to the end, when you get to the end of it, you figure out like, man, this shit ain't really no different. Um, it's just a different look. You know what I mean? Um, same outcome. You still lose the people that you care about. You still hurt the people that you care about. You still jeopardize your freedom. Um, you still go to a place in your head that's not a good place, not you. Um most of the foul shit I've done in my life is directly alcohol related. I've always been drinking at the time. Um, and you eventually have to look at the evidence and say, well, this is just not for me, you know, and you have to make that decision. And what happens is over time, we don't really have any self-worth or self-value because everything we're doing, we're like a slave to the drug or the alcohol. You know, everything we do is for that. And you'll actually find that <clears throat> when you're long-term use, when you're in long-term addiction or long-term uh, alcohol abuse, you'll you'll find that you even change when you're sober and, and uh, clean. You know, I don't know how everybody is, but like I said, I wasn't always, I, I wasn't blacked out every single day, you know what I mean? Because I had shit I had to hold up, and I felt like I didn't deserve to get fucked up if I didn't have something that I was earning in, in the process, you know? So it was always like my reward system for myself. Um, now, there are people I know who, that's their entire fucking life, you know, like, but they'll still have moments of clarity. They'll still have moments of clean and sober in between. I don't... I mean, there's very few people out there who can stay high and drunk 24 hours a day, um, all day, every day. I mean, my grandfather did it. Uh, he stayed drunk 
for a long time, probably like 20 years or some shit. But, I mean, it, for one, it gets expensive. For two, I don't know how you hold up appearances, and I was all about holding up my appearance. So, um, I really worked hard to juggle. But, I'm going to read the comments real quick before I keep rolling. So, Ashley says, so weird that you're saying all this, and I just so happened to come across it. And I just needed this. Reminders are a gift. You're welcome. Thank you for being on. Um, I appreciate, like I've said before, I appreciate you guys as much as you probably appreciate me. Um, because I've always said, you know, my message might not be the best for somebody, but somebody might say something in the comments that might be the message that somebody needed. So that's what the community does. You know, we, we, we work as a team. Um, and I appreciate everybody watching. David says, you're telling my story. Keep sharing. Be safe in your efforts. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying my best, you know, and um, I, I talked about before one of my downfalls. I was I was coming up on 20 months sober and um, I relapsed and now I'm coming up. Um, my next milestone is going to be um, my my 120 days, which will be June 2nd. Um, so. But what I what I learned in that experience and that mistake that I made and that bad choice that I made, I learned that I didn't truly have self value. Um, I was doing it for my daughter, I was doing it for my wife, I was doing it for my brother, and you will never last. If you do that shit, if if you're doing it for anybody, as important as a child is to you, or your child or, or your nephews or whoever, they'll never keep you sober or clean. They might keep you, they might help you get the head head start you need, but they'll never they'll never make you keep it. Um, it's up to you to keep it. And the reason why the topic is love yourself first is because you got to keep it for you, and you're not gonna keep it for you if you don't love yourself, if you don't value yourself, if you don't have any self worth. Because <clears throat> the moment the moment you get under pressure, you're gonna give in. Uh, to your master, and and when you're when you're a, a drug addict and an alcoholic, those are your masters. You know, the lifestyle is your master. Um, you become addicted to so much more than just the drugs and the alcohol. You become addicted to the chaos. You become addicted to being numb. You become addicted to not giving a shit. And. When you, when you get clean and get sober and you start your journey, you have to start to learn how to be human again. You have to learn how to be normal again. You have to you have to do all these different things that you're not used to doing. And it can be fucking rough. You know what I mean? It can be hard to, you know, doing the life thing. But it's so much better. If you just give it time and you get a couple victories, that's the biggest thing, too. It's it's You got to get a couple wins under your belt. And I promise you, the more wins you get under your belt, the easier it gets. You know, I, I moved away uh, from my hometown, and um, it was like every time I went back to my hometown, it was like I just felt, I don't know, I just, I got this euphoric feeling, I got this nervousness, I got this, like, rush, and it was all surrounded by my past, you know, it was all alcohol-related, it was all... I'm, I'm, it's sunny outside. I got my windows down, my music's blaring and I'm thinking about what I would normally do. You know, I'd go get my beer and go find one of my friends and pull up in their front yard and sit and drink with them. Or I'd go pick some of my friends up and we drink and ride around and go find shit to get into. You know what I'm saying? So it's like all that comes back when, when you revisit that place and you have to win in that place. And you get a couple of victories and you, you're, it's like you, you build resistance to it. And you're like, you tell yourself, I did it once, I can do it again. Then you go back again and you're like, I did it twice, I got this. You know what I mean? Not saying you should be complacent or be cocky in your recovery, but at the same time, you need confidence. Humility is great, but, you know, have some confidence too. You know, don't just be all head down humble all the time. Be proud of yourself. Um, promote yourself. You know, speak life into you. Um, 
So it's it's kind of like a give and take type thing. But you got to get some wins under your belt. Um, you can't run and hide forever. You can't um, avoid the world. You know what I'm saying? And number one, you can't avoid yourself. Um, people, places, and things, is, is it's a great start. But I always tell people, you're never going to outrun you. You're always going to be wherever you go. And if you're not healing, and you're not okay, and you're only working on all the outside factors, can't be around this person. I didn't like this meeting. It made me nervous. I don't want to go to that one anymore. Um, I can't work at this job because everybody gets fucked up at it. I can't do this. I can't I can't go here. I can't go there. It's like That's a great start, but eventually you got to work on you. Because it's you that got you fucked up. It's you that kept you fucked up. It's you that got yourself sober. So it's you that's got to keep you there. Nobody else. Um and I'm not trying to say like I'm not trying to, you know, downplay anybody who does that because I moved too, you know? So not, not because of that, but, and when I got to where I was going, I was still getting drunk. And then I moved again and was still getting drunk. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to be able, you can't never just, you can't never run from you. And if you don't work on inside what's in here, you're never going to last. You're never going to stay sober. You're never going to stay clean. So when you get into recovery and you get a foundation up under you, really start to chip away at you. Anybody that um, that doesn't know about it, I'm sure we all do, you know, work work that 12-step program. It's really eye-opening. Um, I'm not, I wasn't like your average, like, get clean and sober guy. Like, I wasn't into the meetings. I wasn't into the step work. I wasn't into the literature. I had my own way of doing things. And it worked for a while, but... You know, I was kind of short myself on experiences from people who were ahead of me and people who have done it longer than me and people who, you know what I'm saying? So um, when my my sister-in-law and I, we did uh, we did the step work for one of our live sessions and I got a lot out of it and I was really pleased with the 12 steps. You know, I thought it was going to be a turnoff, you know, and, and when I read it, I was like, man, there's some good shit in here. Because it didn't harp on getting clean and sober. It doesn't really even talk about it. It always talk. It only talks about your character defects, making amends. Um, you know, are you carrying over your same characteristics into your recovery and good shit? That's the shit you need. That's the shit you need to work on. It's not as simple as getting clean and sober, running from your hometown going to a meeting, smoking a pack of cigarettes, drinking a cup of coffee, and sitting around the campfire and telling stories. It's so much more to it than that. You know what I mean? If if you don't work on you, it's not going to last. And the reason why I say this, you know, I've seen people in the meetings fucking holding the meeting, and I'll see them buying beer up the street. You know what I mean? It's like, it, it, it's good, it works, but it's not a cure. A meeting isn't a cure. This video isn't a cure. It's what you do with it, whether or not you want to treat yourself and, and heal. And you're not going to heal if you don't ever do any self-work, if you don't actually work on you, if you don't actually learn how to value yourself, love yourself, um, speak life into you. Talk good about yourself. Believe good things about yourself. It's all a mind thing. It's all about retraining your brain to think different. Because before, when you were using, you didn't care about you, and you damn sure didn't care about anybody else. Um, your your alcohol, your drugs came first, and everything else was second. And you know because of the things that you sacrifice in the process, you know, you sacrifice paying a bill, you sacrifice having a healthy relationship with your kids, you sacrifice having a healthy relationship with your, um, you know, your, your partner, your life partner, or your parents, or your grandparents, or your brothers and your sisters, you give up all that shit, you sacrifice good jobs, employment opportunities, 
You sacrifice your background. You know, you sacrifice everything for that. So when you get clean and sober, start sacrificing for you. Really you. It's like I said in the beginning of the video, you know, you're perceived as selfish, but truly you're not because you're not doing it for yourself. You're doing it for um, something else. You're doing it. You're trying to run from your problems or um, everything you're doing is just surrounded by drugs and alcohol. And that's not being selfish means it's your you're, everything's for you and, and you know, how, how you can prosper. Doing whatever it takes, all about you, nobody else, so you can get what you want. But we don't really want to be drug addicts and alcoholics. So it's kind of one of those weird, like, gray area things. Are we really selfish? Uh, my wife doesn't have a, a drug problem or alcohol problem. And, you know, she... She struggled with it because every time she took it personal, you know, when I'd stumble in or I'd cuss her out for no reason or, you know, I'd stay out and not come home because I passed out somewhere else. You know, it's like she always took it personal, like I'm, I'm doing it to her. And she had a friend who is also an alcoholic and she told her, you know, it, it's not personal. Think about all the pain he's going through and, you know, how bad he feels and then you make him feel like he's doing it to you when he's really not, you know, it's not personal. Um, and that's why the community aspect is important because not only can we help ourselves and not only can we help other addicts, but we can help people who have to deal with addicts. So it's a lot involved. There's a lot involved. And, you know, I can't worry about anything else except what I need to do. You know, my grandfather, he was like one of those, um, he was like one of those blunt type of people. Like he wasn't really, he didn't really sugarcoat nothing. And he was always, he always said that, like, I got to look out for number one. You need to look out for number one. And it's like, you think at first when he tells you that, it's like, that's kind of fucked up. You know what I mean? But then you see deeper into what he was saying. You know, it's like, there was so much behind that. He, he wasn't he wasn't saying it from a place of being selfish or being an asshole. You know, he was saying it from a place of if you're not taking care of you, you can't take care of anybody else. You can't hold it down for anybody because you can't even keep your shit together. You can't even keep yourself straight because you don't love yourself. You don't value yourself. You're not looking out for you. And when you're putting drugs and alcohol into your body, basically poisoning and killing yourself. You don't love you can't love yourself and do that. You know what I'm saying? You can't love yourself and 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 create shame and, and guilt and heartache and all that. That's not something that somebody who values themselves they don't put themselves in that situation. You know, so it's and and the biggest thing is like when you get clean and sober you it's like you're hit with all these emotions because now you're clear headed and you're thinking back on all the shit and you feel bad for it and let that shit go. That shit's gone. And I tell people all the time, like I'm on both sides of the fence and most of us probably are um, where we grew up around addicts and alcoholics and then also we're addicts or alcoholics. So like you're in a position to understand. And you're in a good position, really, you know, because I used to preach to my mom all the time, like, you know, don't do this for me. Don't do it for your grandchildren. Don't do it for anybody but you. You deserve to be happy. You deserve a life. You deserve to have pride. And when you're putting yourself out there like that, you don't have pride. You know, like, I I had a big ego, but when you become the fucking clown of the night, people start looking at you different. You know, you do it one or two times, a couple times here and there, like, man, you, you got it in last night, you partied too hard last night, 
but that shit becomes a habit, and then you're just a fucking clown, you know, like, that's when they start to draw the line, like, you're a fucking drunk, you know what I mean, you got a problem, because it's not just an occasional thing, you know what I mean, it becomes a habit, it becomes repetitive, and your, your friends will start to see that you don't have control, your family will start to see, like, this guy don't have control, you know, <clears throat> a normal person, like, I don't know about y'all, but, you know, my brother also, you know, he, he don't really have a problem with none of that shit either, but he would drink with me, obviously, but, um, normal people don't hide alcohol from normal people, you know what I mean, like, if you're, if you're normal, if you can function and you don't have a problem, one of your friends or family members isn't gonna fucking hide the beer in a bottle from you in the middle of the night. They're not gonna do that. And if, and you being, the, you know, perceiving yourself as like, I don't got a problem, I got this. You're not gonna fight that person because they hid the shit from you. So it's like, just think about it. You know, you gotta... When you reflect back, try not to reflect back in with like clouded vision. You know, try to look back and take everything for exactly what it was. Yeah, Crystal, it is difficult. But you can do it. And not to say that you don't have to make an attempt at making amends, but your amends can simply be a text, a phone call, a letter, and once you've done it, it's done. Let it go. Don't even care what their response is. You've made your amends, now it's time to move on. Dwelling on the past isn't going to do anything, and... You're not responsible for anybody else's reactions or anybody else's feelings. You know, let's say you have a parent and, you know, you use drugs and alcohol and they've cut you off for all these years. I've heard the story a thousand times. And you try to make amends and they still don't want to fuck with you. They're like, uh, no, I don't, I don't trust you. I, I've heard that story a thousand times. Fuck it. So what? Move on. You can't, you can't, like my grandfather said, you know, look out for number one. You can't worry about what somebody else thinks about you or feels about you. Did you maybe create that perception? Yeah, but you know that you're not that person right now, so you can't let that affect you. You can't let somebody's feelings about who you were in the past affect who you're trying to be in the present and in the future. You understand? And you'll set yourself up. If, if you get into recovery to be a people pleaser and try to get all your old relationships back and make everything the way it was, uh, you're in for a rude awakening because nine times out of 10, it's not going to turn out exactly what you, the way you think. Um, all of our actions have consequences. And though we may change, those consequences may carry over. So you have to be man enough and woman enough to say, I accept it. I created it. And I need to move on and, and just let it go. That's just my advice and my opinion. Um, not telling anybody what to do, but you can't make anybody do anything. <clears throat> and you never know. Like, I always tell addicts and alcoholics, too, you know, it's like they always want everything in a hurry because that was what their life was all about. I got to hurry up and get drunk. I got to hurry up and get high, whatever the case may be. So we kind of, it's always about a quick fix, right? It's all, everything in a hurry. So you think, ah, oh, I got sober and clean, and um, you expect everybody to be on your time clock. And that's not the way it is. How long your parent or your loved one or your friend wants to hang on to their resentment towards you, that's how long they're going to hang on to it. Let them, let them hang on. That's their baggage. That's not yours anymore. If you, if you apologize and you made amends and the best amend is staying clean and sober and you're doing everything you're supposed to do, let them bag it. Let them hold it. Let them wear it. That's on them. They'll get tired of holding it eventually. 
Um, and if they don't, oh well. They're the ones who missed out, you know. I told my mom, you know, I, like, when you get, I told my mom, you know, when you get clean, all that other shit is gone. Anything you did before that day is gone to me. I don't give a fuck about it. I want my mom back. I don't care about the past. It's over. It's already done. And, you know, some families are strange and some people are strange. Some people don't have that undeniable loyalty. It's rare. It's rare amongst people to where you never turn your back on somebody, no matter what they do. Not saying you got to enable because I learned how I learned over the years how to deal with my mom. You know, it was like, I'll come spend time with you. I'm not going to make you feel like a piece of shit all the time because you want to get high and fuck your life up. Um, but I learned that I'm not going to enable you. Basically, I can't live with you. I'm not going to let you live with me. I'm not going to give you any money. Nothing financially related. Don't ask me. And over time, she respected it. She figured it out. Once I told her no enough times, she figured it out. And we finally had that understanding. And she just quit asking. But we got to keep our relationship. And I'd go around her. And if she seemed off, I'd give her a hug and a kiss and be like, oh, I got shit to do. I got to go. If she seemed okay, I would stay and spend time with her. You know, that's just the way it was. I mean... But not everybody's going to do that. Not everybody's going to... You can't ask that from everybody. So like I said, it's your mess. You made it. And you can't put a time clock or uh, expectation on somebody else's feelings and when they're ready to forgive you. As long as you forgive yourself, you can go ahead and move on. Because that's what matters. Yeah, a lot of us, uh, Suzanne, a lot of us get rude awakenings when we get clean and sober. You know, it's like, you think it's going to be all rainbows and gold at the end of the tunnel and shit, and that's not the way it is. I tell people all the time, when you get sober, your work's just started. You ain't done shit. Getting clean and getting sober is just the tip of the iceberg. All the real work comes after. And you have to be ready. And you have to stay consistent in what you're doing. You see a lot of people who got long-term sobriety. Um, five years, ten years, twenty years. And they get so fucking comfortable. That they just forget about everything. And then life comes and hits them like a ton of bricks. They trip and fall and make a mistake. And bam, they're starting over. And I try to tell people all the time too. It's like. There's, there's no, there's no win. You know what I'm saying? Like there's no, there's no race. It's, it's, it's like a lifelong thing. You know what I mean? So if, and when you do relapse, if you do, don't kill yourself over it. <clears throat> Pick your ass up. Don't sit there and have a pity party and get your ass back to work. You know what I'm saying? I hate when I see people go on a run just because they relapsed. <clears throat> you don't have to go on a run. When you relapse, you don't have to get a new charge. When you relapse, you don't have to fucking go on a fucking bender and fucking... Damn near kill yourself. You know it's not serving you anymore. You wouldn't be trying to get clean and sober. So the moment you figure that out, your relapse should be a one-night experience. Wake up. Dust yourself off. Get to a meeting if that's your thing. Make a post in the video. Reach out to the community. Figure out why you did it. 
Figure out what you learn from it and move the fuck on. It's that simple. Hello, Tammy. David says the work never stops. That's a fact. Five years, still a struggle. Yeah. But all your struggles, you know, we just got to remember all of our struggles are just, um, it's so fucking temporary. Like, I used to be the type of guy when I was trying to get sober, something would happen, a switch would flip, and I would automatically, I would just start thinking about drinking. What I was going to drink, what I was going to buy, how much it was going to cost, where I was going to go. Who was I going to drink with? Was I going to drink by myself? What was I going to do? And it would it would overrun my my brain to the point where I'm I get this tunnel vision and I'm buying it and I have I feel like I have no control. Um but and I just kept feed I I would always just keep feeding it. Getting excited, listening to certain music. You know what I mean? And then um I realized after I got some time under my belt that that shit is so temporary. You think like it's never going to go away for the day. It goes away. And but you have to have that foundation. Like usually I'll try to work it out myself because I need to be able to. There's not always going to be somebody there to to pick you up. I see people sometimes, you know, get mad at their sponsors because their sponsor don't pick up. They got fucking lives. You know, they they can't be at your beg and call. They didn't get you fucked up in the game, and they didn't get you fucked up in life. They're just there to help. They're not your savior. So, um, like I was saying, I try to I try to do it myself if I can. If I can't, I'll call my brother. If he don't answer, I'll tell my wife. If she don't answer, I'll you know I have a line. I have a system, and the system is pretty flawless. A lot of times, I'll see. Um, Addicts being addicts, they'll relapse and then they'll blame everybody else. All these so-called friends, nobody picked up the phone, blah, 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 wah, wah, wah. But they're not being honest. They wanted to get fucked up and they already made a decision. So they picked out who they wanted to call that they knew wouldn't tell them what they needed to hear. That they knew would feed them the wrong shit. Or they didn't build a foundation at all. You know what I'm saying? So it's really um, it's really not that hard. It doesn't last that long. But it might come every day. You might have to do that shit every day. You might have to go through your system uh, of staying clean and sober every single day. For me, I don't really have to do that. Um, for me, it I don't get the cravings that much because I've already made my fucking mind up. And I pinpoint it when I relapsed the last time. I pinpoint it why it happened. And it made me see clear. It made me realize why I did it so I don't make the same fucking mistake twice. But I've already made my mind up. And that's where a lot of us fail because we haven't made our minds up. We're on the fucking fence, but we're, rec we're in recovery. But you're really on the fence. You know, you really still want to get fucked up. That's why I always, you know, you got to do it for you. You can't, you can't do it because you're tired of consequence. Man, I'm tired of going to jail. Man, I'm tired of everybody hating me and my girl don't want to be with me no more. And you can't, uh, -uh. it don't work that way. Um, so just, that's why I always tell people, you know, when you first get in, Build your foundation first. That's That should be the first thing you do. And and write down and come up with your escape route. If I get a craving, what's my escape route? How can I get out of it? Because it's going to happen. You know, for my grandfather, he used to always tell me he would just wake up when he'd go to the bathroom in the morning, look himself in the mirror and say, I don't need to drink today. He really just took it that simple. And he kept busy. We're all different, you know, so what works for one might not work for the others. 
So that's why you have to come up with yours. Your foundation and your escape plan has to be yours and only yours. Christina, that's great perspective. I like your perspective. You were clean for three years, so you know you can do it again. And set goals. And then when you reach your goal, set a new one. Because we'll find that we will live up to our expectations. People who think goalless and, you know self-speech and law of attraction people that think all that shit's just corny like made up shit it's not it's real but what i will say you can set a small goal but make sure you have a long term like I don't know who, if anybody writes goal lists or not, but I do, and I usually write a short-term goal and a long-term goal. So try that with your recovery. You know, Let's say you're new to the game, and your first goal is 30 days, right? You made the 24 hours, and now you want 30 days. But for all of us, and this is for every one of us, your long-term goal should be lifelong. Because you might fail. You might fall into that old reward system where you're like, damn, I made it a whole year sober. Let me let me go out and I know I can get a year. So what's one night? You know what I'm saying? You're like, I know I can do a year. So what's 24 hours of partying? What's that going to hurt? I can just, uh-uh. You need a short-term goal and a long-term goal. And all of us, each and every one of us, your long-term goal should be lifelong. That way the work never stops. There's no moment of collapse. There's no moment of rest. When you get past that 30 days, you know you got that lifelong. So all your short-term goals are building up to that lifelong goal. You understand? So you set 30 days. I did 30. Let me try 90. 90. Did 90. Let me try a year. Year. Let me try three years. Three years. Let me try five. But you're always building up to that long-term goal, which should be lifelong. That was another mistake I made. Because I, I didn't, I wasn't really convinced. Um, I got nine months sober one time, and I, I did this thing after being nine months sober where I was like, I'm just going to drink on occasions. You know what I'm saying? Birthday parties, Super Bowls, whatever the fuck. Cookouts. And my wife was like, yeah, but what'll happen is you'll make everything an occasion. <laughs> and it's true. I would. Everything would be a reason. Um, so, you know, that's why you need to have that lifelong goal at the end. It's, it's something you want for the rest of your life. So, I hope my message helped people. Um, like I said in the beginning of the video, uh, I'm a part of Breaking the Chains. Me and my sister-in-law... Uh, it's, it's basically, a, a, we got a Facebook group, we have a YouTube channel where we post all our videos, and we also sponsor events in our communities where we raise money uh, it's for Storing Hope in Women, uh, which is non-profit. Uh, everything goes to the, to the charity, so um, it all goes to recovery. Um, we also sell Breaking the Chains t-shirts. It's a picture of hands breaking the chains, and then on the back it has a memory of my mom. Um, you can change the name if you lost somebody. You can change the name. You can take the name off, or you can uh, wear it like it is. Prices vary. Um, I'll tag Jewel in the comments when the video's over. If you're interested, you can reach out to her. Um, also, I always say in my videos, feel free to send me a friend request. Feel free to message me if you're struggling, if you have any concerns, if there was a question from my video, uh, if you didn't like something I said, um, we can talk about it.
So, um, yeah. I hope you all have a good day. And um, you will probably be seeing me and her uh, maybe tomorrow. Today's Tuesday. Yeah, you'll see us again tomorrow. And I'll probably have her with me. Um, Allison says, I don't consider myself... I don't consider me being clean. I just made up my mind. I quit. And I've been free for 14 months. But I just learned that it's better... I better get a plan in case I have a bad craving. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> you do. You need a you need an escape route. Um because it's overwhelming. And anybody that's went through that where they're about to relapse or they feel it coming on, um, it's overwhelming and it it's no small task until you beat it and then you realize like, hey, this is a small task, but you need to keep your system in place. You need to have your escape route. It needs to be already planned. Because, you know, if, if it's not mapped out, you might make the wrong turn and end up somewhere you didn't want to be. So, all right, y'all. Remember, everybody, stay clean, stay sober, even if it's just for today.